FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. This is Faux Monday, the companion show to FOMO Sapiens, which of course will be back on Thursday with a full episode. But until then, happy Faux Monday. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcast trip by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, on Thursday, we're going to be talking to a guy named Ryan Hartman, who's the CEO of Worldview, which is a company that takes people up into space. You heard about the space race, Bezos, Branson, all that silliness. I guess Elon Musk is in the mix there. That's great for the billionaires, but what about everybody else? So Worldview is creating a more accessible version of space travel now. Granted, it's not like it's $1,000, but still, it's something that you could realistically save up for. It's basically the price of like a nice car. And so we're gonna explain where that business is, how he's building that business, and sort of what is it all about? Like, what is the point of going to space? What do you get out of it? All right, so that is on Thursday. Now, as I thought about that topic, I was thinking, you know, that's a pretty intimidating trip. And I have traveled a decent amount. If you follow me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, you may have noticed that I have been on the road. I didn't go anywhere for years. And now it's just like nonstop. So I just got back from a trip that took me to Moldova, Croatia, and Azerbaijan. And I had been to Azerbaijan before, but I had not been to Moldova and Croatia. And Croatia became my 112th country, believe it or not. I don't even know what to do with that information. It's just, it's insane how this sort of, it's like one day you wake up and you've been a lot of places and it was a lot of hard work and focus, but I've really enjoyed my travels. And I've been to some places that are, you know, not the usual places that people go. Places like Yemen and Guinea-Bissau and Chernobyl and Ukraine and Pakistan and Mongolia and Uganda over the years. And I know that can seem really intimidating. And some of you are saying, oh, I'd love to do that, but like, wow, like, Oof, how am I going to do that? And some of you are saying, oh, McGinnis, I've been there already. And that's cool too. But on today's Faux Mondays, I want to talk about how to travel to places that seem intimidating. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it because we have been stuck in our houses for so many years now. It's time to get back on the road, go to some places, make that list. And so let's get into that. I have really 10 tips that I have come up with on how to travel to places that just seem a little intimidating or a lot intimidating. So let's start with number one. Number one, figure out what you're optimizing for. So here's my little secret. I'm gonna let you in on how I see travel. Okay, there's a bunch of different types of travel, right? But the travel that I don't find very interesting is the White Lotus version of travel. It's sort of like, we're gonna go to a resort in some place and stay on it and pay some ungodly amount of money to be there and to be exclusive. Like, listen, if that's your thing, like you do that in good health. I would rather not. I'm more interested in going somewhere that is interesting and different and also where money goes farther, where I can stay at a really great place for a fraction of what it would cost me at some really fancy dancy island. And let me tell you something, if you go to Moldova, you're gonna really struggle to find a hotel that's more than $150 a night. And they're nice, by the way. And so that is really interesting. Of course, when you go to a, a country in a part of the world where there aren't a lot of sort of fancy hotels, maybe you don't even like that. Maybe you do the Airbnb, maybe you do the hostel. It's all up to you. But for me, like there's always that one hotel that's very expensive. But then there's lots of other ones that are reasonable and you can stay there for ages and you can have a wonderful experience. I'm just not interested in dropping tons of coin on a hotel room. That's crazy. And that's what I'm optimizing for. I want interesting and value for money. Now, you may say, ah, it's not my thing. I'm optimizing for spirituality. And so therefore, you want to go to India or Israel or somewhere like that. Or you may say, well, I'm optimizing for luxury. Well, good for you. That's the whole important thing is to recognize that when you are figuring out what you're optimizing for, and you're thinking about places that could be intimidating, you just kind of want to make sure they match up. Because if they don't, and you go somewhere that's a little outside the beaten path, and it 
doesn't deliver on what you were going for, then you're not gonna be happy. Like if you're looking for extreme luxury, don't go to Ethiopia. There are nice things in Ethiopia. I'm not picking on Ethiopia, but it's not like you're going to Bora Bora, right? It's a whole different experience. So that is number one. Number two, have a goal in mind. And this is something that I think, listen, I've not always been the most thoughtful person. I definitely am one of those people who just like wants to do something different and interesting. So I didn't always think about it. But nowadays I kind of have, when I go into a place, an idea of like, what do I want to get out of it? Like for example, when I went to Croatia uh, recently on this most recent trip, I was just really interested in seeing and learning about kind of how Croatia fit into the former Yugoslavia and what life was like there. And I had just randomly also been in Serbia, which is kind of like, you know, they used to be both be part of Yugoslavia. So I wanted to ask people questions. I asked tons of questions about what happened when the country broke up and about the war. And I went to museums about that. And I went to a museum about the eighties and in, in, in Zagreb where I was. And just, I kind of was really interested in the history elements. It could be history. It could be art. It could be spirituality. It could be meeting people, whatever it is for you, but just having a sense kind of a purpose for why you're there and some of the things you want to take away from the trip, it makes intimidating places less intimidating because at the end of the day, you sort of know why you're there. Number three, this is a really important one. It's not possible for everybody, but if you want to go to places that are intimidating, find a job that pays you to travel to these kinds of places. I was really lucky. I worked at a private equity firm that sent me to Pakistan like five times. I wouldn't have gone necessarily on my own, maybe to like a wedding, but going to Pakistan with this professional setting in which I was going to the big cities and I was hosted and I met a tons of people. And then we went on this trip up to the North and helicopters and we went to see K2 base camp and just that stuff I could have never done on my own. It was all about knowing the right people and being connected and probably would have been really expensive, but because it was covered by my job, because I was doing it professionally, it just made it much more possible. As you guys know, I do speaking, so I've partnered a lot with the State Department, and they invite me to go places. I just probably wouldn't go on my own, Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde and, I don't know, just stuff like that. And so I have lots of friends who have jobs that allow them to travel, whether you're working in the travel industry, which of course you're gonna go all kinds of places, or if you're working in energy or all kinds of other you know, investments, or there's a million jobs that allow you to travel. Now, obviously travel gets old after a while. So like if you're always, you know, you're a consultant, you're constantly on the road, like that becomes a little grody, but it is a wonderful way to see the world. All right, we'll continue with number four through 10 after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, everybody, we're talking about how to travel to places that seem intimidating. Next one, gear. Invest in the right gear. Now, I want to, this is a tricky one because you don't want to be that person who went to the travel store and bought too many things, like dressing in a safari suit with a pith hat. No. Well, first of all, there's a lot of reasons why you can't do that, but it's just... You don't wanna be that person who shows up and looks like they're trying too hard. That is bad. And in fact, one of my dear mentors in the travel space, my friend Fraser Simpson, taught me the value of kind of underdressing because it's just kind of more nonchalant. And so, you know, you wanna have good stuff, but you don't wanna overdo it. And so, for example, let me tell you a couple of things that I do. First of all, the luggage side. So being the person who's carrying around a regular suitcase in a country that is a hiking country. For example, if you're going on a hike around, I don't know where you'd be, Himalayas, not a good look. Get yourself a nice backpack that has all of the compartments, but you know, don't get yourself 53 backpacks and 43 water bottles. Just bring what you need, be simple. I recommend, there's a wonderful clothing brand called Icebreaker that makes this clothing that you can literally wear every day. And even if you sweat in it a million times, it smells fresh as a daisy. And so it allows you to actually bring less things as well. Get yourself a good credit card. That's one of those things that we forget about. A good credit card that has access, for example, to lounges at airports that has access to things like no fees on foreign transactions, all those things that help you if you get in trouble. It's really important. A good credit card is better than good luggage, I would say. A good phone plan, also important. If you're in the United States, I recommend T-Mobile because you get basically pretty good data plans all over the world. If you're going somewhere really kind of far-flung travel insurance in case, God forbid, something happens and you gotta get escorted out of that country. But just get gear 
that is well-made that you can use over and over and over again. I've been using the same backpack basically for my entire adult life. It's from L.L. Bean, a little plug from my friends from Maine. And it just makes a huge difference to have it. But again, you know, I don't show up looking like I just, you know, I just, it's stereotypical person spending a lot of money. It just, it's bad. You just want to be low key. Just try to fit in as best as you can. Also, I just mentioned it with the icebreaker. Number five, underpack. Less is more. So I used to overpack. I'd bring way too many things. What I've learned is that you need the basics, right? You need the icebreaker stuff or whatever your brand is, the underwear and the clothing, stuff like that. A couple pieces here and there. You need to be able to layer. That's important depending on where you're going. You need good footwear that is relatively adequate for the terrain. But you don't need to bring big hiking boots if you're going to the beach, right? People do that. Why? You need a hat. You need suntan lotion. So important. Medication. Basic safety kit if you're going off the grid. I you know, would recommend making sure you have all your tech all set up and maybe a, a charger that works with the solar if you need that, if you're going to be somewhere really far away. And apart from that, you know, just buy things. If you're in the wilds, then, you know, make sure you have all the things you need plus some emergency. But if you're going to Belgium, you can buy anything in a store. So under pack, because you know what I've noticed is, <laughs> this is insane. In the old days, I would just get back from my trip and half the stuff I didn't even use. I was like, oh, like I never even wore this sweater. Like, what am I thinking? I hate bringing a lot of things because you don't want to check luggage if you can avoid it because nowadays they just lose it anyway. So just think very carefully, kind of do a little Marie Kondo action. You know, everything you put in your suitcase, be like, do I really need you? I love you and I'm going to leave you home if I don't need you. That's a really powerful way to make sure you don't overpack because you also want room in your bag for all the goodies that you buy. And I also recommend that you get a little pack that you can fold up like a second bag that you can just fold up nice and small and throw in your suitcase or your backpack that you can use as a secondary bag if you need it. You can also buy luggage, of course, but much better to just have a little bag that you can bring with you. And we'll be back with the final, final items on our list in just a second. FOMO. FOMO. All right, we're talking about how to go to intimidating places. And I've realized that this has turned into a lot of practical, just general travel advice. It's not just for the intimidating places, it's for all the places. But I just think when you simplify, it's really about simplifying. The more you simplify, the less stress all this has and the more places don't feel daunting. That's what it's really all about, it's mindset. So let's go on to number six, find like-minded intrepid travelers. It's so much easier when you have friends to go on trips. I went on this crazy trip to Yemen, to the island of Socotra at the end of 2021 with a group of eight people. And it just was like having like-minded travelers who were interested in doing the things that I wanted to do and were there. And, you know, it just, it just made it way more fun and less kind of stressy, right? Because it was definitely something that was a bit off the beaten path. You know, you're taking a flight that is largely for actually for sort of medical and other sort of humanitarian efforts. And they, they sell some tickets at great expense, sadly, to tourists but it's not like everybody's going there. So having friends there made it really fun. So find those people in your network. They don't even have to be good friends. Just make sure that they're low key, they travel nicely, and then go and have a nice time with them. Number seven, do not do packages. Package, tours. Listen, I understand. I understand the reason, but I'm telling you something. It's, they're just so, they take you to these terrible things. It's like half of the stuff they take you to is just trying to get you to spend money on silliness at like antique markets and crafts markets and stuff. Just go to the country and just figure it out. If you have to, do some day tours. That's always nice. Go on TripAdvisor and you know do something cool like a food tour, but just the package tour with all the people and you're on the bus, it just don't. That is not travel. That is just, it, it's also really overpriced. Just stay away from that. Number eight, Find people in the country through your friends. I do this all the time. I'm going to a country and I just say like on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, who knows somebody in X country? And I've had these amazing experiences. I went to Cote d'Ivoire. Somebody that, uh, that, that, that heard about my trip there introduced me to this couple who were working there. He was working as a diplomat. She worked at the World Bank. They just took me everywhere. They had this cool truck. They took me into the forest, like this sort of jungle. It was just wild. Another time I was in 
Qatar. I put it on Facebook. I was there. A woman I'd met years ago in Argentina, her ex-husband lived here. He took me out for like a meal. It was just nice. And so you never know. Just you meet people and I'll never speak to that guy again. Like it's not where we're in touch. But we had an awesome time at the wonderful Yemeni's restaurant in the souk in Doha. So if you're ever in Doha, go check that out. Number nine, become impervious to stress. So let me tell you something. These days, travel is not easy. I was just on this flight back from Azerbaijan. I forgot my passport at the hotel. I had to go back and get it. Then on the flight, we connected in Istanbul. On the flight back to New York, we had a medical emergency. We had to divert to Vienna. If you were following me on Instagram, you saw all this. I got to tell you something. I had meditated that day. I didn't freak out. You, travel is a test of our resilience. And we've been talking about resilience a lot on this season. We're going to be having more resilience to come. So just try not to freak out. Everything will be fine. Even if you miss your flight, that's okay. Maybe it wasn't meant to be. And finally, write about what you're doing. Keep your memories, take photos. You know, I love Instagram. Instagram's great because it is like a travel log, really. You're putting all your photos in one place and telling a story with them. I write about my travel. I've kept a journal in the past. Just write it down because you think you're going to remember it, but you're not going to remember it. And I think it's really important to recognize when you do this travel to places that are far flung and not easy, it's wonderful to have the memories later on. I've gone back and read my journals and I'm like, oh man, these are. So, I'm so glad I have these. All right, that's my advice on travel, kind of in general, but also how to go to these places that may feel a bit intimidating. Let me just recap one of 10 for you. Number one, figure out what you're optimizing for. Two, have a goal in mind. Three, get a job that pays you to travel if you can. Four, invest in the right gear, but not too much. Five, underpack. Six, find like-minded intrepid travelers. Seven, avoid those packages. Eight, find friends who know people in the place you're going. Nine, become impervious to stress. And 10, write it down, take photos, keep memories, because you're not going to remember. All right, those are my tips. If you have ideas, thoughts, feedback, you know where to find me, at Patrick J. McGinnis on Instagram. Let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. I will see you on Thursday with Ryan Hartman, the CEO of Worldview. We're going to talk about space. What could be better than that? So until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.